In April 1939, the German fleet entered the Channel en route for exercises in Spanish waters. At a time when a European crisis was almost a weekly affair, it served to remind even the most complacent that Nazi Germany was once again entitled to rank as a primary naval power. The force which moved up the Channel consisted of submarines and supply ships, as well as surface fighting vessels. In those days, most interest centered on the three 10,000-ton pocket battleships Lutzau, then called Deutschland, Admiral Scheer and the Graf Spee. We were at peace then, and as it's difficult really to study the ships while they're in motion, perhaps we can persuade the German captain to help us. Uh, captain, would you mind? Thanks. The first of these was the Lutzau, easily identified by the stout military pole mast and the catapult between the mast and single funnel. Originally, both the Graf Spee and the Scheer had a solid pyramid-shaped tower in place of the foremost. This is the Spee. He differs only slightly from the Scheer, the low, thick armour belt being one of the main differences. For on the Scheer, the belt is less prominent and extends further up the side. For that reason, she may well prove a tougher job than the Spey. Lately, much of her pyramid tower has been removed and she now resembles the Lutzau more closely. The stories of the invincibility of these ships were current even in 1939, but a complete answer to the Nazi boasts was given a few months later when the Admiral Graf Spey fled into Montevideo Harbour after merciless battering by Admiral Harwood's squadron. Outside in the estuary, the British cruisers waited, but the German ship, her fighting efficiency apparently unimpaired, sailed to an ignoble end at the hands of her own crew. The 6,000-ton K-class cruisers have fared little better than the Spey. Out of three ships, only the Köln remains afloat. Recognizable by the mainmast mounted on her after funnel and the two triple turrets abaft it. Among other surface ships, the Scharnhorst and Neisenau have given us most trouble. These pictures were taken when the two 26,000 ton battle cruisers were at sea playing their parts in the Battle of the Atlantic. This is the Gneisenau. Originally, it was easy to tell the two ships apart, for the Scharnhorst had a straight stem, while that of the Gneisenau, as you can see, was cut away. The Scharnhorst has now been modified and resembles her sister ship in this respect. The main difference now is that the Gneisenau carries a mast on her funnel, while that of the Scharnhorst is of the tripod type and situated much further aft. It goes without saying that the two raiders caused considerable damage to British merchant shipping. And they were soon located and then started the merciless air attacks by British aircraft which have gone on ever since. Here, our planes are attacking the Gneisenau as she shelters in Tronium with the heavy cruiser Hipper, which, by the way, is rather like a small edition of the Tirpitz. While on their cruise, aerial reconnaissance was extensively used by the battle cruisers. Each ship carried four Arado 196 float planes. Capable of 180 knots, the Arado is a neat, low-wing monoplane with a single radial engine in a blistered carling.
Some of these planes have a large single float under the fuselage and two smaller ones at the wingtips, but this is the more usual type. Another seaplane in service is the Heinkel 114. It was designed to specifications similar to the Arado. It wasn't so successful, however, and it's therefore now used chiefly from shore bases. A small twin float biplane, the Heinkel 114 has an unusually short lower wing braced by diagonal struts. Top speed about 150 knots. Other attempts by Hitler to use his big ships as commerce raiders were unsuccessful. He proudly launched the battleship Bismarck in February 1939, but the smile was off his face by May 1941 when this ship was sent to the bottom on her first attempt at Atlantic raiding. The heavy cruiser Prince Eugen, launched in 1938, which had escorted the battleship, fled to Brest. When the Tirpitz went down the slipway in the April before war broke out, there was a technical hitch. She refused to slip. All Hitler's commands and entreaties failed to move her until she was ready. When you get them, the hit them alone. The failure of the surface ships resulted in an intensified U-boat campaign carried out with typical Nazi ferocity. Three main types of U-boat are used by the German Navy. The largest is the 740-ton ocean-going type. They mount a 4.1-inch gun well followed of the conning tower. The forward mounting of this gun forms the most outstanding recognition feature. In the 517-ton seagoing type, the gun is of 3.5-inch calibre and mounted much nearer the conning tower. We are taking an ever-increasing toll of Hitler's underwater fleet. The majority of casualties are completely destroyed, but this one was brought into port intact, the first submarine to be captured by an RAF reconnaissance plane. She too is of the 517-ton class, and she was brought in wearing the white ensign, probably the greatest honor which will ever be accorded to a Nazi U-boat. And what's this coming up? No large gun followed. It's the 250-ton type used for coastal work. A light anti-aircraft gun is sometimes mounted on the foredeck. The apparently high conning tower makes the 250-ton U-boat pretty easy to identify. Cooperating with the U-boat fleet, as well as making individual raids on our shipping, is the four-engine Fokker Wolf 200K, which has a top speed of 230 knots. Originally designed as an airliner, this aircraft has seen much service over the Atlantic. A large bomb compartment is fitted under the fuselage to starboard. New four-engine types are in production, but so far they've not been used extensively. Another machine still in service for reconnaissance work is the Dornia 18 flying boat, recognizable by the flat parasol wing the large sponsons and the twin motors in a long tandem mounting, the Dornier 18 has a top speed of 150 knots. In later models, a gun turret may replace the open nose position. The enemy's destroyer flotillas are equipped with two main classes. These are the Liberec mast type of 1,625 tons displacement. The single mast and two tall funnels of unequal size make the Liberec mast type easy to distinguish from the newer Navic class. The Navics have tripod foremasts and low funnels of about the same height as the bridge. There are several types in service. In some, the upper forward gun mounting has been removed and the lower one replaced by a twin turret. Cooperating with the destroyers are the E-boats. There are several types. 
This is one of the most modern. Fitted with twin forward-firing torpedo tubes, these speedy little craft have tried many raids on our coastal convoys. In spite of their failures, however, they form a constant threat to shipping passing within range of their bases.